Grab your embroidery, Wargamers, because today we're going back to the Vendée. Specifically, we are going to the town of Vivre Rousseau. Rousseau? I think I pronounced that correctly. Fairly dense suburban terrain here. The Vendée Royalists have been conspiring to raise an army. And the Republicans, those sons of Voltaire, have dispatched Mon Capitan with a column of, what is it, 11 soldiers to come roust out the leaders of the rebellion. They're actually counter-revolutionaries. They're the royalists. Those guys are the rebels, but whatever. The goal is going to be these two figures right here. A couple of guys I haven't seen on the tabletop yet. This is Madame Objectif, and this is Père Debutant, because it's the first time we've seen him. So, Father Rookie and Miss Objective. They are hiding in one of these buildings that you see down here. I had my lovely and talented assistant place two chips underneath two of these buildings. A blue one and a red one. Whichever one has the blue chip will have Madame Objectif, and whichever one has the red will have Père de Boutons. I don't know which one it is. They have to send one guy in to each building. That guy has to spend an action searching, and then he has to escort the reluctant prisoner back off that side of the table. We're going to be using Song of Blades and Heroes. Now, Andreas Filigoy has produced a set of rules called a Song of Drums and Shakos, which is specifically for Napoleonics. Might be better for this, but I don't have that, so I'm not using it. I'm going to improvise on this, but before we get to exactly how I'm going to do that, let's talk a little bit more about the objectives. they got to get on, get the two prisoners, and escort them off. Their stats from A Song of Blades and Heroes are that you've got a leader who's got a quality of three, and he fights at a four. He's a leader, and he is dashing, which means on his first round of melee, he gets plus one. All of his soldiers are quality four plus with a combat of two. They are all capable of shooting long, and they, uh, I think that's it. Oh, but because these are black powder weapons, it's going to cost them a full activation, one action, to reload their weapon after it's been discharged. Same thing for these guys. Let's take a look at the Vandeans. What we have here are four groups of four, and in each group there is one huntsman, and that's the feller with the rifle. He has a quality of three plus, and he fights at a three. He can shoot long, and he has good aim, which means it has the penalties for firing. The other three gentlemen are rabble. They're just farmers. Uh, they have a quality of four plus, they fight on a two, and they are steadfast, so they have a plus one to their morale. Now, the way this is going to work is I'm going to bring on each turn, so the Republicans are going to go first, I'm going to bring on one group on each activation. Gonna, uh, it doesn't matter which group is coming on because they're all the same, but I'm going to roll a d6 for where they come on the board. We'll get to that in a moment. This last guy is special. This is Baron Le Tout. And he is going to arrive on turn six. And anybody that falls is going to come on with him on turn six. And it might be more guys than you think. Because in addition to uh, having a fairly low combat, these guys are rabble. If you beat them in hand-to-hand -hand combat... They're out of the game. Normally, in Song of Blades and Heroes, you have to double their combat skill. This time, you just have to beat them. They're pretty fragile. But, they're going to come back. So what we're actually looking at here is potentially 32 Vandeans against the one column of 11 Republicans plus their captain. The reinforcement points are, as I said, we're going to roll a D6. And that's going to be 1, they're going to come on this road. 2, they'll come on that road. Three, you can't see it, but I have another marker behind this ridge. And this ridge is one low line of hills. The ridge is impassable. So is the Vivre Rousseau. 
except for the bridge and that little oh you can't see it let me see if i can get that in the shot there we go see that little ford that's the only other place that you can cross the stream uh so that's reinforcement point three reinforcement four is the road that the the republicans are coming down and then five is over here on this hill and on a six they're going to come bursting out of the the publican house here at the center of town so i don't know where they're coming from i don't know where their prisoners are held in a sense, I'm taking the role of the Republicans, except they're clearly the bad guys, so it kind of leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. But for game purposes, that's how we're going to roll this thing, okay? Uh, once again, I do have these figures, and they will make an appearance once we discover which of the buildings they are hiding in. Likewise, on turn six, he'll come in at one of these five, except, oh, I should point out, because he's bringing reinforcements from out of town, if I roll a six... He doesn't come on that turn. On turn seven, we're going to roll again. And as long as we keep rolling sixes, he still hasn't made it to town. One through five, he'll come on at that, that point. Anything else we need to talk about on this? I don't think so. The trees are all individual uh, terrain items that you can hide behind. All the usual rough ground, rough ground. Uh, the cemetery is not rough ground, but it does take an action to clamber over the wall. Likewise with the hog pen and all of these... Uh, all of these uh, hedges along the way as well. I think, oh, you know what, let's go ahead and tighten this up a little bit. And these hedges do meet there. So in order to get over here, you either got to come around or clamber over there. I think that's it. We're ready to go. We're going to start the game with the Republicans down there. One, oh, one last thing. I'm going to be moving the camera around to focus the action on wherever we're at in town. I will always have the camera on this side of the board to help you understand the geometry of the engagement. I'm never going to swing it around from that side. Also, you should be able to keep this guy in mind. The church and the public and house will help you stay oriented as we kind of shift around to follow the action. Okay? All right. Let's do it. The game opens with Mon Capitan. And I think I've been doing leadership wrong in the past. First of all, if you're within a medium move of the captain... Your figure gets a plus one to its quality. So instead of being quality four, they're now quality three. Uh, then what you do is, so our captain's going to roll for his actions. He's got a quality of three plus, so he gets two actions. And he's going to use those actions to try to first give these guys an order. And they're going to roll to activate as one. Normally quality four, plus one for the leader, so they go on threes. And with one action, all they can do is move forward. Now, if I had rolled a squib on that, if both of those were failures, then I don't understand whether he can use his second action to give them an order. I think you do... So if I had rolled three and I came up with two failures, they would still get to move, but the two failures mean it's a turnover. That's not the case. He has a second action. He's going to order these guys to move up as well. And so now they do squib it. That's it. End of the turn. So we have to roll a d6 to see where the first batch of Vondeans come on. And they're going to come on at point two. It doesn't matter which group we use. They're all the same. This is reinforcement point two. So I'm just going to take this first group here and drop them in line right there. And since we have three guys with a quality of four and one with a quality of three... I'm going to go ahead and just roll a single die for each of the quality four gentlemen. Two of them can move. doesn't really matter at this point which two it is. So we'll just bring these two gentlemen up to here. Sorry, tree. And then I will roll three dice for my marksman. I'm going to roll these so you can see that I'm not cheating you. How about right there? Uh, my marksman has a quality of three. He only gets one action, and then it's a turnover, but it was a turnover anyway. Uh, he's going to go ahead and keep pace with these two fine Vendean gentlemen. It's going to take him a while to get into the action. Let's go back to our Republicans and see how they do. As with the last time, we're going to start with our leader, and he gets one action. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and with the two failures, he cannot give any orders. So he's really struggling to get people moving. I think what we want to do is just, maybe we'll just bring him up one. 
And now the Vandeans get to bring in more of their troops. Now, if I roll a four on this, there's a very real chance the Vandeans come in right there. And I did. I got a four. This makes everything so much more fun. Because it means the Republicans get ambushed right from the get-go. Apparently the Vandeans were happening from them. Kind of a historical result there. However, I'm not going to start with these guys because it's going to get complicated. I'm going to go back over to the bridge and I'm going to try to activate those guys first. And this time around, it kind of matters what we're doing. I got two guys here that are going to activate on a four. And they both activate. So they're going to move up and come just over the bridge. I hope they don't slip too far. Yeah, it's going to be a problem. Uh, okay. We know where they're at. They're actually back there. Then I'm going to try to roll for this guy back here. And that is a six. So he can run up to the foot of the bridge. And then I'm only going to take, because it's not the end, I'm going to try to take two actions with this hunter. He gets both of them. So he can move up to here. And with his second action, he's going to come take position right behind the corner of the building, looking down the lane to where those Republicans are all in disarray. So our first farmer is right here, and I'm going to roll two dice to activate him. And he gets one activation. He doesn't have a leader nearby, so he's going to use that to pin this soldier in place. My second farmer is going to do the same, and he gets no actions. So it kicks over to the Republicans. How about that? Our leader here is going to turn around, and he's going to try to take three actions. With a 5-4-4, four, four, he gets all three actions, and he is first going to... Uh, these guys are just in range. So I think what we'll do is order this group to move. And a 4 means each of these guys does get to move. So the first guy is going to enter this house. I'll put him right here in the corner so you can see. Now he doesn't have an action left, so he can't search it. This and the other three are going to race up to here to try to get ahead. That's action one. Action number two for him is going to be to... Now he can order these guys. They are in range. So he's going to give these guys an order. Move and open fire. And they're going to try two. With a three, they get two actions. So first we'll start with this guy, who just has to turn around. And he gets two actions. He's going to take a shot at him. That is the hunter, who has got a combat of three. The guy that's shooting has a combat of two, and I think that's it. So the blue die is always going to be for the blues. And the yellow die will always be for the Vandeans. With a uh, 5 versus a 7, nothing happens except he is now out of ammo. And to reflect that, I'm going to put a little blue chip on him. Might get a little crowded, but that's all right. We'll make do. The second guy, uh, remember they all have one action. So the ooh, an aim shot gives him a plus 1. He's still lost. Uh, this guy now is going to wheel around and take a shot. Likewise. Combat's all the same. He gets a total of five. He gets a total of four. He is not rabble. So that three just pushes him back. And because he's on the edge of the board, he's off. That's all you have to do. Now he goes into the pool of reinforcements. This guy then is going to do the same thing. He's going to wheel around and he's going to take a shot at the farmer. Oh, wait a minute. Did I do something wrong there? You know, I did it's a three versus a two that was a tie nothing happens all right we'll do it again same thing that's going to be a two versus a three he actually survives and then we have one more guy who's going to wheel around and take a shot and this time the von Dan wins and so all four guys shot at the hunter and missed wildly i'm kind of surprised by that I thought I thought I broke off a a um 
a, a bayonet there, but this guy is actually reloading. So I picked the right guy. See, he's got his little ramrod there. And I picked the right guy to drop. No, 444. Four, four. Uh, these guys are all out of ammo. What are you even doing? Uh, I, I guess um, melee is really their forte. We're not done yet. He has a third. I can't remember what it was. He's, uh, I can't remember if he has a third action or not. Regardless, he's going to go ahead and keep up with these guys. He wants to keep up with the Vanguard. And the next step is going to be... Hey, come on. Lock in there, camera. The next step is going to be we got three guys over here, one of whom is already in combat. So we'll start with a guy that's in combat. He just... No, you know what? I'm going to try to get all these guys stuck in. Uh, no, I take it back. This guy wants to move. And on a three, he does not. This guy wants to move. And on a four, he does. Now, he's actually going to move up here. we got to find our boys. We're going to leave four. And then, of course, he wants to try and fight. And he has an action. So it's going to be a two-on-two -two here. Rabble Farmer versus that guy. And remember, if because the Vondaean is rabble, if this soldier wins by even one point, the rabble goes bye-bye. Uh, that is a tie score. They both have a quality of uh, a uh, combat of two. So, nothing happens. Except it becomes the Von Dayen's turn. And the first thing we do, as always, is roll for reinforcements. And the next batch of reinforcements are coming up the rear as well. So, we'll just squeeze them in there as best we can. And what an interesting development we got to go back over there first. Can this fine gentleman get on? No. What about this guy? On a three, he holds still. And what about this guy? On a six, he can move up. Now, I'm actually, because I'm irritated that he's sliding all over the place, I'm going to go ahead and just move him instead. I hope you'll forgive me. Indulge me this one time. He's going to run up here. And really, he's more of a delaying force. Then the last thing we got is this Hunter, who has a quality of three, and a three and a five, he can move twice. So he's going to move once and twice to take shelter behind this tree. And then he can start taking pot shots at the soldiers on his next turn. Let's go back to where the main bulk of the action is. We're going to start with this huntsman. He wants to take two actions. Look out, Lol Kyle. He only gets one, but that's enough to get off a shot. He's got a combat of three, and he's going to be shooting at this guy right here. We have a combat of three. It's at short range. We have a combat of two. So plus three to the yellow, plus two to the blue. And that is a nine versus a seven. And because he wins with a even number, this guy falls to the ground. Then we're going to... Oh, but I should make sure to point out that he is now out of ammo and needs a reload. The other... Shooter over here is going to take a shot at this guy. Or he's going to try to anyway. With one action, he's able to get the shot off. He doesn't get a named shot. But again, it's going to be three versus a two. Blue gets the three. And that is a six versus a six. So nothing happens. Let's bring this guy up next. Quality of four. The lack of a leadership is, is really hurting him. He can only move one. So he's going to move up to there. So we got a two on one. Then I want to bring this guy up to make contact with this fallen soldier. Uh, they were going to call that a two to four. So he makes contact, but that's all he can do. He really needed a pair of fours. We're just going to get stuck in. He's going to go... Well, he's going to try to make... Mm, do I have anybody else I need to move? No. All right, so this guy's going to take two actions. And he gets one of them, so he's going to go butt heads with him. And then I've got this guy is going to take two actions, and now he does get two actions. So I suppose I should probably measure this. He's actually going to move over here and attack this guy three on one. So this guy is now, this Republican is fighting at a zero. And this rabble is fighting at a, um, at a two. So that is a six versus a three. Oop. That means he doubles, and that means this Republican has been sent to meet his his Saint Lady of Reason in the sky. And I have one last guy who's going to take three actions 
Uh, and he gets two actions, so he can use one to double team this soldier. And that's going to be a two, no, a one versus a two. And that is a six versus a two. And that is really not good because it means a tripling is a ugly kill. Otherwise known as a gruesome kill, all friendly models, so that's all of these guys, and now I have to make a morale check. And we're going to start with the easy one. That's this fella down here. They all have a quality of four, so I'm going to roll three dice for the guy that's on the ground, and if he fails even one of these, which he does, he is no more. Then we're going to have to roll for... Uh, he's not in contact. Okay, um... We're going to roll for this guy next. And he has to make two compulsory moves for the nearest table edge. Which means, and because they're so close, he is going to flee off the table. With those two actions. Uh, oh no, he only, well, how far away was he? One medium? Yeah, we'll make it easy. He's gone. Every failure is a compulsory move off the nearest table edge. So we have to roll for this gentleman yet. Uh, he is not in contact, so that one failure means he runs over here. If you're in contact, the guy gets a free hack at you. And then this guy over here, all three mean he's gone. And then what do we got left? Anybody? Oh, yeah, this guy right here. Uh, he has three... He has three failures as well. We should have kept that leader a lot closer, shouldn't we? One, two, he's gone. So already we've got five of our Republicans. I might have seriously underestimated how strong to make these Republicans. Because we are, they've already lost seven of their 11 troopers. And we are not far into this game. Balance issues are your friend. The Vandeans still have four more guys coming on the board. All right, they didn't work. I'm actually going to call it right here. To be fair, getting ambushed that close to the table edge really hurt the Blues. But I think that if we balance this a little bit better, given that we're looking at 32 rabble versus the 11, that's a 3 to 1 advantage. I don't think the two versus two combat is really appropriate. So what I'm going to do is replay this. You'll see that video in two days. But this time we're going to tweak it just a little bit. And what we're going to do is because our Republicans have fancy bayonets and our rabble has whatever tools are held to hand, I'm going to give the Republicans a plus one to their combat for melee only. Shooting, still not so great. But for the melee, if I give them a combat of three, I think that will go a long way towards uh, balancing the scenario a little bit better. Uh, again, to be fair, we were looking at basically a two-to-one advantage over here. You know, if, these, if one of these dice had come up different, the Vondans might have been pasted. I still don't know where any of my civilians are, so let's shut it down here. Come on back in two days. Until then, remember, I'm praying for you.